Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. We have a question today that's submitted by Joe, and he says, I've been using the PPGS and finding that I like it a lot. I'm hitting the ball very well with the exception of a block, which I seem to hit about half the time. When I practice, I know my setup and alignment is good. I put a club at my feet parallel left. I may be under-releasing, but I don't know what to do about it. Submitted again by Joe. Okay, Joe. All right. I've had, I've had plenty of people, plenty of students swear to me that they are parallel left or parallel right if they're lefties. All right. And, and, and they say that they put the club down and check them and everything else. And like, I don't know if you're, did you say that you're doing it on the range? Uh, you say when you practice. All right. Now, I've had, I've had done, I've done lessons. All right. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. I have clubs down on the ground with students, and I'm explaining alignment to them. And I said, okay, when you practice, anytime you're using a line, you can never put your toes directly on the line, because if you turn into the shot like that, as this foot rolls, swings up to the pirouette of position, toe on the ground, as you, as you in your forward upswing, swing up, the line moves, all right? And so next thing you know, in two or three swings, this line could be way left, and if you're not paying attention to it, now your body's lined up way left, and, and therefore, uh, you're either going to hit pulls, or you're going to have to you hold on, under-release, as you said, and hit it to the right. So you should always be two or three inches away from the line. But then, I see this happen all the time. It never fails. I got the golfer doing this, so I don't care whether we're using a wedge to a driver. They'll come in here, and they'll walk in here, and, and they will, they'll set up to the ball, and they'll be like this, and they're getting ready to hit it. And I'll say, say they've got the ball out there. And they're just about ready to swing us. And they say, stop. I might even say, stop. All right? And, I, and, I, and I'll let them do it a couple times to make sure that they're, they're doing this. What am I talking about now? Well, I come over here, and, and the, left, the left foot might only be that far from the line, right? About that far. But the right foot is almost the whole width of the club head inside the line, whereas here, it's here, this foot, this foot's at least two inches farther from the line. Ooh, that means my feet are now aimed to the right. So, I mean, I've seen, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. Even with the lines down there, the player is not looking at his toes to see if they are the same distance from the line. So if they're not the same distance from the line, then you are not lined up, your body dead square. And I would say there's a good probability that even if you have lines on the ground and you're checking yourself, that, that there's a good chance it might be happening because I see it time and time and time again. And normally we're going to see it aiming to the right if you're a right hander, left if you're a left hander. So you, gotta, you have to make sure that if you have your lines there, you're paying attention to them. Another one is, is let's, say, let's say you hit a golf ball and then you come here and, then, and when you, and you finish and you come back and you're going to check yourself after hitting like I say so many times. I see golfers come down there and, and you know, they, they, they bounce it off the foot and it bounces down and, and one might, it, it might be off an inch. Well, an inch is, is I've always said, if you've if you got a one inch, one inch spot over here in front of your ball that's an inch off and you line up dead parallel, right, parallel square to that, one inch adds up uh, or flares out about 10 yards every 100 yards. All right, so an inch is a lot as far as as as, as uh, alignment goes. So, like I say, when I say about alignment, you know, align uh, close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and atomic warfare. Alignment, you want to be spot on. It's like no different if they if they can't if they can't string a straight line to build the foundation of your house. You might have your house going out this way or or coming in this way instead of going dead straight. Okay, that's why they always use strings in any type of things like that in carpentry and in. Uh, the, the laser beams they use when they, when, the, uh, when they go out and survey lots and everything else, they want it dead accurate. Well, that's how accurate you really need to be here, okay? Now, again, you could be right. You could be just under-releasing, all right? Meaning that, that instead of releasing into the forward mid-toe up, you're kind of just holding on a fraction long through impact and just long enough that the ball starts, to the, starts down the right side. Now, in many cases, if you are under-releasing a little bit, that ball might start right and probably should have some, some cut or fade to it. Uh, a, good, a good probability would be the ball might be too far back. And so you're hitting it a little bit too soon. And in many cases, if the ball's back, some folks, uh, golfers, to, to get hung up on the right foot and might have a late release. And many times I've seen golfers hitting the ball like this and they're here, and at the last second they push themselves off and they get up and they say, whoa, nice finish. 
Yeah, a day late and a dollar short. And and uh, so you're supposed to be coming into the ball and, and your weight should be rolling to the inside. Hit it and everything rolls up and this foot's coming up with you as you swing up. The whole right side's coming up, chasing the, the, the arms of the club up to the finish. So ball position could be critical for, for, for a block beating it's too far back. Another one that tends to happen is even if you have dead perfect square alignment, all right, and you're still dead certain your alignment's dead square, you could have a situation of starting your body, starting your downswing with your upper body, which gets you slightly ahead, a slightly, the body's a little bit farther back, so it's almost the effect of hitting the ball, of hitting the ball with the ball back too much, because it actually has gone back from where you started it, with you moving forward, and that'll push a block. You do that severely enough, you could have such a severe, severe thing, uh, with the drives, you know, very steep angle of attack, you could start hitting it high on the club face. That's how many times sky marks get on the ball when you get too far ahead of it, or the ball's too far back and you come down and hit it off to, to get the sky marks on the, the leading edge of woods. And you might start hitting divots a little bit, you might get divots a little bit deep. So your body might be moving ahead. Another one could be you just get up here and you bump too much. A lot of people think that leg drive is important and they're, and they're really trying to drive their legs. Well, if you drive your legs too much, from this view, and you get in here, and you, and, and even when I drive my legs, whatever little bit my lower body goes, my upper body, the spine tilts backwards a little bit. Dr. Armstrong calls that the secondary spine angle tilt. Well, if I get too much leg drive, then, then what happens? I can almost be borderline collapsing back there. And, and, and if I collapse, I could be coming in and hitting the ball relatively solid, but I haven't been able to square my club face up because as I collapse, it tends to pull your arms under and, and slightly going out. Now that'll hit that, that might have a lot more cases of not hitting it solid and, and towing it and hitting it high in the face one time low on, on the other side. Another one that I'm hearing a lot of and getting questions a lot about is people are trying to work on their lag. They want more lag. Lag is natural. I don't, it, it's created by here with me maintaining this angle and not breaking down at the top when I come down. But if I'm trying to create more lag and I'm holding on to it too long, the club's not, you don't give yourself a chance to the club to square up. Lag is, is already created. My lag is created at the takeaway. I got this angle. I come to here up. I come back down. It's here. And, and release is just, it ro your arms rotate in impact. Over lagging is just going to give you all kinds of problems. That could be another issue. So, uh, last but not least, another one could be if you're, let's say you, you're, you're, we're supposed to turn only to the toe line and, and lift straight up, right? Three quarter limited third swing. Let's say you got just a fraction too much turn and you swing straight down from that line, you'd be hitting it straight out there. So that what happened is, is your turn changed your upper body alignment because if your toes were dead on the line, even if you were dead square with your shoulders, but you had that little bit of turn and swung straight down from there, you're technically swinging inside out because you got your arms just behind a little too deep in the sacred barrel ground and you're swinging straight out and you could really be popping some great, some great power blocks, dead straight shots to the right. That would be if you're really hitting them solid and just like bullets out to the right, I'd look at the fact that you're not turning too much, especially if every time you check your toes, your toes are spot on. So you might have started spot on with your toes and shoulders, but that little bit of turn is swinging you straight out. And so dead solid straight, that would be a good, good probability. If the ball position's correct, everything's good, except the fact you, you turned a little too far and now you're swinging straight out there. Okay, so we covered about five or six different options here, and they're all, they're all possibilities. And uh, so you can take a look at yourself, get a friend to check you out, maybe videotape yourself and see if you can knock down which one could actually be this, exactly what it is. And right off the bat, if I've mentioned something that you've been trying to do and just told you that it can cause problems, then that would be the place to start, okay? All right, well, hopefully this is going to correct this, this block. And, and this all, this all, all these things can apply for a pull too, uh, with other different reasons, but it can apply for a pull, these, many of these things. All right, so... Uh, and don't forget, face slightly open or shut can, can cause that too. All right? So uh, shut naturally a pull for a right hand uh, and, a, and a open would be the, the block. Okay, well, that's it for the search for today on all these probabilities of what could be causing a block. And, uh, and so check it out. And I've got a good feeling the answer is there somewhere. Okay, Joe? Well, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.